What? Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rafi and here we talk about fragrances because that's what we talk about here most of the time. Some of the time we talk a little bit about philosophy, but today it's unboxing Dior's Dolce Vita. I want to caveat this and say this is probably going to be this is probably going to be like a one take affair because I want you to see my actual reaction of smelling this for the first time since the 90s because I haven't smelled this since the 90s. This is a fragrance that I think I'm, I'm quite sure my mum had a bottle of and she may have gone through more than one in, in the 90s. And if I go back in time, excuse me. That's just gonna be the reality of the matter. Why have I been like decades without it? Um, I don't know, I have no idea. It was never on my radar until I was walking past like a, what we call here an up shop or an opportunity shop. It's kind of like a, I don't know what Americans would call it, Goodwill, is that what you call it? Or Red Cross or sell, something like this, where people will sort of donate their, their goods and uh, it gets sold and the money that's collected goes to charity. And this was a, this was a, a pet, a pet up shop where the money goes to, uh, I guess, helping pets, whatever it was. I was walking past and I thought that box on the shelf behind the counter looks familiar. And uh, I walked into to get a closer look and I saw that it was a, a bottle of uh, a box of Dolce Vita. And it wasn't just the box itself. It was uh, a vintage box. And the way I could tell is because it looks like this. It's a vintage box of Dolce Vita. Because it's not fully yellow, it's got the black at the bottom. Also, uh, I think the, the older ones also used to say US fluid ounce at the bottom. Uh, and then the new ones say just fluid ounce. And I think this has been discontinued. I'm, I'm not entirely sure about that. But I did have a look at the side and this isn't an original 90s formulation. Um, I do know my Dior batch codes quite well. And uh, when I did have a look at the bottom of here, I can see that it is from, no, I forgot. It is from 2008. Hmm, okay, I don't know, the box. No, it's just my fingers that are fragrant. I thought it was the box that was leaking. In any case, I had a good look at it and I thought, you know what, for whatever I paid for it, which wasn't very much. I think it might be worthwhile taking taking a punt and seeing what this is like uh, again. I did read up on it before I did this video and originally it was released in 1994. I may have said 92 before. Uh, it's 1994 was the original release year for this fragrance. It may have possibly been reformulated, I think in when when most fragrances got reformulated when it was released there was no there was no ingredients so if you want to tell what an original 1990s formulation was like the box itself kind of looked like this but it had no ingredients listed on the box itself the second formulation which i think came in like the uh, the late 90s to like the early 2000s had a short ingredients list, like you would see in most vintage fragrances, you have like a short ingredients list. It usually just has something like um, alcohol, parfum and aqua water, and that's it. But then uh, another reformulation would have happened and uh, you would have the allergens sort of listed on the box itself. And Dior is kind of good with this because on the box, they actually have the formula numbers, which is on the bottom right there. If you can see the little formula number there, by all accounts, this uh, 2008 was the last year of the good smelling juice. Not exactly the same as the 90s smelling juice, but very, very close. It's just, it's the same smell. It's just a little bit, it's just a little bit more watered down. I can live with that. And it could just be the age of the juice inside as well. And so it needs some more time to get a bit more depth. You never know. But um, hopefully this has been kept well and that it smells like what it's supposed to smell like. And the sticker 
I don't know if I need this sticker or anything like that. I, I don't. But uh, let's see. Usually, usually when the uh, when the plastic uh, sort of packaging, the wrapping, is in good condition and the adhesive hasn't really dried out, that's a good sign that it's been kept well and away from away from sort of severe temperature changes or heat sources. Uh, let's open it up. And I'm always nervous about opening up things like this. This has been 15 years, I guess, um, since it was originally made. So I'm kind of wary whenever it's... Okay, good. It doesn't have any smell of fragrance in here. Great. Now, one more thing I did notice when uh, you have... when you If you're looking for a vintage of this and you don't actually have the, the box pictured, and uh, this little golf ball is cute. Um, is that, as you can see, there's a sticker at the bottom which mentions the batch code, right? And this says 8R01 to, to sort of indicate that it's 2008. Um, but the, the, the 90s, in the 90s, Dior had five digit batch codes and they weren't, they weren't on a sticker on this particular bottle. They were etched into the to the edge of the glass of the bottle there. So if you do have a batch code that's sort of up there or something and etched into the glass, then you know you've got a 90s one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's have a look. Let's take... Oh, that's, that's spinning. Let's take that off. I don't know why that's spinning, but it's spinning. Hope it doesn't leak. Let's put a spray of this on a tester strip and show you what that's like. Oh, very nice. What? Oh, that's amazing. What? Get out of town. How has no one picked this up ever? It smells so similar to one of my favorite fragrances. Oh, maybe it's just in the opening. It's gotta just be in the opening because that's just uncanny. That's insane. It smells like, oh my God, I gotta show you now. It smells like, <laughs> it smells like this guy. That's, uh, yeah, it smells like Creation E. It smells like Enigma. But obviously not, not, as, not as dense as this. This is like a real, hmm, packs a punch. But um, yeah, that opening, it's, wow, it's so weird. I wonder what the, maybe I should look up some note listings here. It's supposed to have peach and cardamom. Maybe, or maybe it's coming through now. But that must have been like the cinnamon or something. No common notes shared between uh, Dolce Vita and Enigma Poem. I, I see none. How is this even possible? Is my nose playing tricks on me here? The fuck is going on? There's florals in here. There's in Dolce Vita. You've got. Yeah, I can smell the peach now. It's almost like a fizzy peach drink, you know? It's some um, the the peach and the cinnamon and that sort of dusty sort of cardamom and the and there's like a bit of lemony elements in here from the cardamom. It's not from the citruses, it's from the cardamom because it's like a dusty sort of dry lemon quality to it. It's totally giving it the same vibe. Maybe it's the vanilla cuz the vanilla is the only note that they share in common. And I don't know if it's the same kind of vanilla, but oh my God, it, you, you gotta be kidding me. Like anybody who owns both Dolce Vita and uh, Enigma or Creation E from Roger, please tell me I'm, I'm hallucinating. But this is like a, a lighter, less dense version in the opening anyway, of, of that. Which automatically means I'm going to enjoy it, but 
I'm not going back in time, which is pretty odd. Maybe in the dry down. And the dry down, of course, um, is probably most likely going to be a beautiful concoction of vanilla and sandalwood and, and cedar. Which uh, sound like quite sort of, in this day and age, quite masculine sort of notes to dry down with. So, yeah, odd. Quite nice. Man. I'm so happy with that. That's uh, that's that's one hell of a that's one hell of a find. As a matter of fact, what can I say other than I guess live the dolce vita, live the life that is sweet, and and don't have existential crises like you know Marcello Mastriani. And as always, thanks for watching.